What's up guys, it's Sean Astrom here and today we're going to take a quick look at how to properly bring in an HDRI map into Corona Renderer and also how to use Corona's amazing built-in physical sky right inside of Cinema 4D. So let's take a look. <laughs> Hey guys, so let's first take a quick look at how to bring in a HDRI map inside of Corona for Cinema 4D. So I'm just going to bring up the render settings here, switch over to Corona. I'm also going to lower my resolution settings here just so it's a little easier for you guys to get a quick preview. And then I'm going to go into my performance settings and lower the interactive, or actually I'm going to raise this interactive rendering to 25. I guess at, by default at zero there, that just means it's going to render on continuously inside of the IPR. So I'm going to throw in a big plane object, which will act as our ground. And then I'm going to go into the content browser here, and I'm going to go to presets, visualize, 3D objects, buildings, cityscapes, and there's just some cool models inside of here that we can use inside of our scene just for casting shadows and kind of taking a look at these HDRs we're gonna bring in. So let's just bring in these guys. I'm gonna get rid of these default materials, don't need those. And I'm just gonna zoom out here. Looks like one of these buildings is pretty large. So I'm gonna scale this guy down and why don't we scale this one down just a hair as well. And good enough. So zooming in here, I'm just going to create a real simple setup here. But so to bring in an HDRI map, it is literally as simple as going up to our objects here under floor sky, physical sky, all this stuff and bringing in a default Cinema 4D sky object. And then all I need to do is create a Corona light material and we can name this HDRI1. And now inside of here, I'm just gonna go to the texture setting here and load in an HDRI. Now I've prepared a couple that I have um, from an HDRI pack that I actually sell off my site called CG HDRI V2. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys these because they're 12K resolution and they also come with alpha channels. I'm gonna show you guys a cool little trick here that you can do with those alpha channel maps. So the first one I'm going to show you guys is this Colorado Day here. It's a 12K map. Don't need to copy it to the location here. In fact, that reminds me, I'm just going to save real quick over this file here. And you can see here, we get a nice little preview here. It loads pretty dang quick for being a 12K resolution um, EXR file, uh, which is pretty cool. And if I just drag this guy onto my actual sky object here, Select this as well if you want to increase the resolution of your background. I'm going to show you how you can do that here. So if we select this and go to preview here, under viewport size preview, we have this setting here. And I can increase that to you know 1K, and that gives us a much nicer preview of what we're actually going to get here. But it doesn't really matter because once I fire up the IPR, we're going to get a lovely actual preview of the actual rendering here. So just like that, you can see kind of the lighting we're getting from this HDRI. We're getting nice hard shadows and clouds and everything else. Um, so pretty much it's as easy as that. Now, one of the cool things we can do with Corona is we can go into this post tab here and we have bloom and glare, sharpening, denoising. We can bring in LUTs right inside of here. We also have some tone mapping control. But I just wanted to show you guys the bloom and glare real quick. If I just enable that, you'll see that we immediately get a nice sunburst. And if I increase the bloom intensity to something like 20, you can see that we get that beautiful bloom effect that is actually you know being calculated on top of our rendering so we're getting that casting over the building and um, yeah it's just an awesome feature to have right inside of the render engine so i'm going to throw in a camera so we can just look at a slightly wider angle of view and 
yeah, pretty pretty cool stuff. So if I want to underexpose this by a stop, I can just do that here. I can also, I'm going to lower this now. It's pretty intense. There we go. That's looking pretty cool. I can also bring in my LUTs right here. So if I just turn this guy on, I can cycle through all these amazing LUTs that ship with Corona. Now, remember guys, Corona is still in beta for Cinema 4D. You can get it on the forums. And yeah, I highly recommend checking it out. It's an amazing render engine and it's pretty much what I've been using as much as possible on all of the projects that I currently have. So just like that, that's one HDRI example. Let's bring in another, and this is the one I will show you guys on how to create some kind of fake cloud shadows. So this guy I'm gonna load up here is called Cold Morning. <clears throat> Let that load. I'm just gonna throw that on there. And notice the IPR is rendering um, while all this is happening and how fast it is. Um, so this is my other sky here, Cold Morning. And just like that, we get a nice, awesome preview. And I still have that same bloom effect set up from the previous one. <clears throat> and yeah, we can get some really awesome looking lighting with HDRIs inside of Corona. It's, it's really that easy to set up. So to do these shadows that I want to show you guys, what we can do is we can actually bring in a sphere object. And I'm going to crank up the size of this guy to something really large, like 20,000. And you'll notice it's going to block out the light, which you'd expect. Then I'm going to create a new material, and we'll just call this fake cloud shadows. And I'm going to turn, well, actually, I'll leave diffuse on. That doesn't really matter, but I'm going to leave that on. And then I'm going to go to opacity here, and I'm going to load in the cold morning alpha. And just like that, you can see we've got a nice alpha channel going on here. And we're going to use that to cast some fake shadows. So if I go back to my material here and select the actual texture here, under the white point setting, I'm actually going to lower this to something really low, like 0.25. And you'll see how it kind of increases the contrast of that map. If I just open this guy up, you should be able to better see that. So that's kind of our cloud alpha. <clears throat> and you can see it in my uh, IPR here, how it's pretty much mimicking the shape of the clouds and everything else. And if I increase this just a little bit more, I really want these hard edges here. And I may scale up the radius of this guy a little more. <clears throat> so that's looking pretty good. Now what I need to do is I need to add a Corona compositing tag. So if I just find that guy here under Corona tags, compositing, and I'm gonna uncheck scene by camera. And then I'm gonna also uncheck scene by reflections and refractions. But we definitely want cast shadows on because if you guys see here, if you look at the ground, we're actually getting some nice fake kind of cloud shadows from this map. Now these aren't a perfect solution, but it's a lot better than having an HDRI without any shadows coming from the clouds. So kind of a cool little trick that you can do with these HDRI maps that I've created. Um, and I'll just show you guys, if you go to my site here, it's just sastudios.tv. And you can see these guys here, the computer generated HDRIs. Um, I have two packs here. Um, the, the old one comes with about 30. This new one comes with about 50. Um, and they're a little bit higher quality than the ones that I did a few years back. But anyway, check those guys um, out. They're pretty dang cool. Um, and this is kind of what you can do with them. Another thing you'll notice is there is no horizon line on these. So they pretty much are a full 360 degree lighting solution. But yeah, that's pretty much how easy it is, guys, to bring in these HDRIs into Corona. So let's just do one more. This is another little map I pulled off of the web here just to see how well Corona works with all these different HDRIs. Now I know, uh, I believe HDRI Link and all those other cool plugins out there do work with Corona. Um, but here's another one I found. Um, but yeah, the, the interactive IPR is just awesome. And we're getting some really cool bloom and glare effects from, from these bright lights up here. Um, this guy was pulled off of this uh, hdrilabs.com site. Um, so check these out if you guys haven't before. Totally free. 
Um, and yeah, guys, that's how easy it is to bring in an HDRI into Corona. So moving along here, lastly, I want to show you guys real quick the built-in physical sky. Now, if I just want to create a generic 3D sky model, I can do that by bringing in a Corona sun and a Corona sky here. And I'll just get rid of this guy and all these materials just to keep my scene a little more cleaned up. So right off the bat, you'll see it's just a little overexposed. So I just need to underexpose it by a few stops. And I'm going to go, let's see here, minus five and a half I found works pretty dang good. Or let's do six. Looks good. Um, so you'll see here the, the sky model inside of Corona is just awesome. Um, and if I go to the actual sun object, this is sort of acting as our light. If I just kind of lower the angle here, you'll see we can get a nice kind of sunset. Looks like my exposure reset itself. I think that's a little bug there, still trying to work out. Um, but again, ladies and gentlemen, this is in beta. So you have to keep that in mind. There we go. So yeah, the built-in sun model, or sky model rather, is phenomenal. Um, it kind of uses the latest model, uh, or one of the best models, I guess, that's available. And if we select the actual sky tag here, you can see it's the Hosek and uh, Wilkie model. And you have some kind of basic controls here with the actual sky, the intensity here. And then you have horizon blur, which is actually really handy. Um, and a few other cool settings. Now this is the actual sky tag. And then we have the sun itself where we can also increase the tent intensity. You can see that affecting the ground here. <clears throat> and of course, well, this is pretty cool. We can actually control the sun size. So if we wanted to create some soft shadows, for example, and we crank this guy up, you'll notice that the shadows on the buildings are getting a little softer, which can actually be a kind of a desired effect sometimes. Um, let's let this bloom and get glare calculate. I kind of want to see what it does here on this big sun. <clears throat> oh, turn itself off there. I'll just turn it back on. <clears throat> so that looks pretty cool. So anyway, guys, this is the built-in sky, which you can also use for doing exterior lighting. And it gives you a ton of control. We can also go into the, the sky tag here and enable this raw fake setting. And with this guy, we can actually like fake a different atmosphere. Like if we were trying to do like a Mars type thing, we can easily do that with that guy. Sorry for that exposure bug guys. It's just a little annoying, but yeah. So that's kind of what we can get out of the physical sky, sky and the physical sun object right inside of Corona here. Well, I hope you guys dug this video and I'm going to sign off here until the next one. See you guys soon. Prograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Prograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in the HDR studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> It's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel. And I'm not here to judge. The podcast and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, 
Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Aryev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hasselfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammer, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omatola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.